Everybody say, I'm finished with worry. I'm moving beyond it. Therefore, I tell you, stop being perpetually uneasy, anxious, and worried about your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, about your body, what you're going to put on. Is life not greater in quality than food, and the body far above and more excellent than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. And maybe we should stop and do that. I've never seen a bird sitting on a branch having a breakdown. <laughs> there are people that are bird watchers. Maybe there's a reason. They're not sitting on a branch going, Ooh. wonder where my next worm's going to come from. God is so amazing. He upholds and maintains this entire universe, the Bible says in Hebrews. He keeps all the stars from running into each other and all the planets from banging into each other and everything rotating around everything else. It's just astounding, the majesty of our God. And then we think we have to worry about some of these little silly things that we worry about. We don't need to worry about what people think of us. We don't need to worry about what people think of us. We don't need to worry about what people think of us. We don't need to worry about what people think of us. Come on, somebody must need that. We don't need to worry about what people think of us. You know why? They're going to think what they want to anyway. Look at the birds of the air. They neither reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they are? Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm worth more than a bird. Okay, I love verse 27. And which of you, by worrying and being anxious, can add one unit of measure to his stature? If you're short, you're short. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I love people that are confident and really know who they are in Christ. I love Zacchaeus in the Bible. He was a short little guy really short and Jesus was coming and he so wanted to see Jesus but he was too short he couldn't see all over all over all the other people and I love what he did he didn't go sit down and have a pity party and say oh man I'll tell you if I just wasn't short I get left out of everything because I'm short I don't want to be short I want to be tall he didn't do that he ran on ahead of the crowd and climbed up in a sycamore tree And when Jesus came by, Zacchaeus, come on down here. I'm going to go to your house for dinner. You know why I love that? Instead of whining about what he thought was a problem in his life, he had a positive attitude toward it. And instead of worrying about what he couldn't do, he found something he could do. And God so loved that spirit of determination that he said, I'm going to go home with you. So stop worrying about what you're can't and looking at everybody else and comparing yourself with them and wishing you were them and being jealous of them and envious of them. And just say, it is what it is. And I'm going to deal with it. And whatever I don't have, God's going to make it up to me. I don't do anything but talk. That's all I do, and it's working out really well. I don't. I don't do anything else fancy. I mean, I've got, you know, a lot of good common sense and some business sense. I mean, I can, you know, manage people, that kind of thing. But mainly, I talk. Why don't you just start doing what you can do? Trusting God to make it work in your life. You can't even add one inch to your height by worrying. Why should you be anxious, verse 28, about clothes? Consider the lilies of the field. Learn how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, Solomon in all of his magnificence and excellence, dignity and grace was not arrayed like one of these. You know, it is amazing how you're just reminded of the majesty of God when you take the time to really look at some of the things that he's created in nature. I watch a lot of like nature shows and animal shows. I love to watch shows about lions and tigers and leopards and bears and 
I like to I like that planet Earth and and life and now they've got one about great migrations that's been on TV and I'm just I am astounded. <laughs> I mean, I am astounded when I see how God has given every animal, every bug, no matter how little that bug is and seemingly insignificant, a way to protect itself. God has taken care of everything. And we are the height of his creation. He considers us to be the cream of the crop. And he's trying to give you a message here. If I take care of the birds, am I not going to take care of you? If I made the flowers, am I not going to take care of you? Because those things really are fairly insignificant compared to the, to the height, the top of God's creation. If you've wasted already a lot of your life worrying, why don't you make a decision tonight you're going to give it up and move past it? How many of you have a tendency to worry? How many of you have a tendency to try to figure things out? Okay, then I got the right group. And those of you who didn't have your hand up, you can feel sorry for the rest of us. <laughs> so many things you're worrying about right now aren't even going to happen anyway. Verse 31, therefore don't worry and be anxious, saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I believe the devil sends out a little demon every morning to sit on your shoulder and scream in your ear, well, what are you going to do? 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 <laughs> Somehow we always feel like we're supposed to come up with answers that we don't have. And I'm going to tell you, Real faith will get you to the point where you are totally comfortable not knowing. How many of you want to be comfortable not knowing and not to have to be embarrassed to say, I don't have a clue what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. But when I need to do something, I guess God will tell me. Oh, I was really, really, really bad at reasoning. I thought I had to have everything figured out, everything in a nice little slot. And even as far as anxiety was concerned, I believe that anxiety is trying to figure out tomorrow today. It's wasting your time today trying to figure out something that's not here yet. And I think I got in the habit of that when I was a kid and I lived in such a volatile atmosphere. And I felt very unsafe and never, ever, ever knew what was going to happen because my dad was very unstable. And I think that as a measure of trying to make sure that I was protected and taken care of, I would in my mind try to outguess what he might do so I could maybe not be there in that place or not do that thing that might set him off at that particular time. And it's been very difficult for me to learn how to live in the now. That has been one of my great goals is that he is here right now, and I want to be here right now enjoying him and with him. I don't want to be somewhere else where God's not. I want to be right where he is. And it's something that we have to learn how to do on purpose. Let's just look at verse 34. Well, we might as well read 33. But seek at, aim at, and strive over first of all his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of being and doing, and all of these other things will be added unto you. So don't worry or be anxious about tomorrow because tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own. Sufficient for each day is its own trouble. You know, we should not even think that we're smart enough to figure out our own problems. And as long as you think you're smart enough to figure out your own problem, then you'll keep Worrying about them, trying to figure them out. See, I've come to the point now where I pretty much know that anything I come up with is not going to work unless it's God's idea. Amen. Now, there's nothing wrong with thinking about things. I like what the Bible says about Mary when the angel appeared to her and told her she was going to have a child and she knew she'd never been with a man. The Bible doesn't say that Mary worried. It doesn't say that she reasoned. It doesn't say that she became anxious. It says that she pondered all of these things in her heart. And I believe that we can ponder things. But I tell you when it's gone too far, when you start getting confused, you start getting upset, 
you start having mental torment, then you need to say to yourself, I've gone too far and I've gotten outside the realm of God. And I need to back off here and just trust God. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 is a wonderful group of scriptures. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and mind and lean not to your own understanding. I'm sure that many of you have something that you could certainly stay up all night and try to figure out. And it's possible that if you've been here since last night and maybe you haven't had an opportunity to have meals with friends, you may have discussed what you should do with them. Well, what do you think I should do? You've tried to figure out what you should do. Now you're asking other people what you should do. I don't know why we keep going to people. Most of them don't even know what they're doing, let alone be qualified to tell us what we should do. Amen? We need to go to the throne, not the phone, when we got a problem. <laughs> Trust the Lord with all your heart and mind. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. I know this statement's been around a while. Although for some reason it missed me, and I've been hearing my daughter say this lately. It is what it is, so deal with it. And I really like that. I think there's a lot of things that we just fight against that all of our fighting against it is not really going to change it. And it just is what it is. And you can deal with it because God is with you and He will help you. God will help you, whatever your situation is. I've got a little power pack, three scriptures that I lean toward whenever I'm having difficulty or I've got a situation that I really don't want to have, but I've got it anyway and I've got to try to do something with it. I've got to put it somewhere in my thinking, I've got to put it somewhere in my heart so it doesn't bother me. And the, the three scriptures that I lean on very much when I have problems are Philippians 4.13, which I am going to put up on the screen, because I want you to see this in the Amplified Bible. I absolutely love this scripture, Philippians 4.13. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything. I'm equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Don't you love that? I'm ready for anything. I'm equal to anything through Christ who infuses inner strength into me. Another scripture that I lean toward, I'm not going to put this one up on the screen because it's extremely lengthy in the Amplified Bible, is 1 Corinthians 10, 13, which basically says God never allows more to come on us than what we can bear. But with every temptation, He also always provides the way out, a landing place where we can be safe. And then Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. And I believe that. Everything maybe isn't good, but it can work out for good to those who do two things. Keep loving God and keep wanting His will in their life. There's nothing that God cannot turn around and let you get some value out of if you'll keep trusting Him. I don't know how to explain this, but I say this and I believe it with all of my heart. I really can no longer feel sorry for myself because I was abused in my childhood. Because somehow... A mystery of God, through the amazing power of God, I actually believe that my life is somehow better now than it would have been if that would have never happened to me. And I don't really know how to explain that. But I know that God has given me opportunities that I would have never had as just a way of kind of making up to me for the pain that I had in my life. I know that He has honored me in situations and given me favor. And I wouldn't trade my walk with God for anything. For nothing. I would not trade what I have with God if I could not have had that happen to me and, and not have this relationship with God or had it happen to me and have this relationship with God, I would take all the hell I went through to have the relationship with God I've got right now because I've seen His faithfulness in my life. And when I stand in front of you and tell you that I know that God is faithful and I know that He loves you and I know that His Word is true and I know He's got a good plan for your life and I know that there's nothing that's come against you that God can't work out for your good, I'm not just making something up. I know that because I've seen it work in my life. You know, there are some things in life that are just inevitable. 
some things that just they're just gonna happen from time to time and you might as well just say well it is what it is and I'm just gonna deal with it and here's a few of them you will do a lot of waiting in life Sila pause and calmly think about that whatever it is that you're waiting for right now when you get it it won't be long and you'll be waiting for something else not only will you wait in grocery store lines and wait at the gas station and wait here and wait there but you will wait on God and if you want to be happy you will learn to wait well with a smile on your face trusting God's wisdom and integrity you will wait you will wait here's another inevitable in life not everybody's gonna like you oh well they missed a good opportunity to know somebody awesome Hey, God's the one that said you're awesome. So I just figure, you know, if somebody don't like me, then that's between them and God. 10% of people won't like you. They won't like me either. 10% of people won't like us. But let's think about the 90% that will. In life, here's another inevitable. From time to time, you will get disappointed. But the good news is, is in God, you can get reappointed. If one thing don't work out, praise God, every day is a new beginning. You can let go of yesterday and start all over again. I don't know how much better it could be. His mercy is new every morning. No matter how bad I messed up yesterday, I can get forgiveness and start a brand new day. Not all your plans are going to work. That's another inevitable in life. Some of them will, maybe a lot of them will, but they're not all going to work. The Bible says man's mind plans his way, but God directs his steps. All my plans are not as great as I think they are. Here's another thing you just have to understand. The devil hates you. Here's another piece of good news. When you try to do what's right, you will get persecuted. Okay. You want me to go here and read it to you? I didn't make it up. But did you notice how it just went? <laughs> Blessed, happy, and fortunate are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, <laughs> for being and doing right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed, happy, envy, spiritually prosperous with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor are those are people when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account so if I'm gonna believe this then that means that every time that an ugly newspaper article has been written about me telling all kinds of lies when all I'm trying to do is help people according to this I'm blessed I haven't gotten around to feeling blessed yet but I'm on my way because every time it happens, I keep reading that and reading it and reading it. You know, really what the message is, is that we are privileged to suffer for Christ's sake. We are privileged to be able to stand up and say, I believe in God the Father and in His Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. I believe that He died for me, was buried, rose from the dead, and that I am his child. I believe that. And to have somebody make fun of us. And, and we're, we're privileged to be able to say that. If you're going to have a strong walk with God, somebody that you care about is probably going to come against you. I mean, it's inevitable. But we got to care more about what God thinks than what people think. And we have to care more about eternity than right this minute. When God called me to do what I'm doing, we got asked to leave our church, lost all of our friends. Most of our relatives turned against us, and it was one of the hardest times in my life, and I didn't get it because I thought, I'm just trying to go on with God. But you know, when you want to do something different than what other people are doing, 
Sometimes the only thing they know to do is judge you and criticize you. And then God asks you to forgive them and love them on top of it. <laughs> yes, when we try to do what's right, we will at times be persecuted, but in due time you will reap if you faint not. I said in due time you will reap if you faint not. Aren't we funny? Did you notice how everybody clapped for the good part? <laughs> Here's another inevitable. God does not always say yes when you ask him for something. <laughs> but you can always be assured that if he does say no, then what you asked for was not going to be good for you. Amen. Amen? And my last inevitable is people are not perfect. We're all just a little bit weird. <laughs> Including me. God's will for us is peace. He doesn't want us worried and upset and anxious and fearful. But you know what's interesting? You can't have peace if you don't understand grace. And I found something interesting. In the Bible, in the New Testament, a large number of the New Testament books, the greeting that the apostle gave to the church as he began to write the book, that particular book, was grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Over and over and over. It's in Colossians, 1 and 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, 1 and 2 Peter, and 2 John. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's how they greeted one another. What do we say? Hey. <laughs> hey, man, what's up? <laughs> but Paul was saying, you're not going to have peace if you don't understand grace. Here's what grace is. Grace is not just the undeserved favor of God. Grace is the power of the Holy Spirit coming to us freely to help us do whatever we need to do with ease. Let me say it again. If you've got a problem, what you need is grace. If you have a big problem, what you need is more grace. <laughs> And if you've had a problem a long time, then you need grace, grace, and more grace. <laughs> grace is the power of the Holy Spirit to enable you to do with ease what you could never do on your own with any amount of effort. God can make hard things easy. If you have a child that's very difficult to raise, or you've got a situation in your marriage that you feel like you just can't bear, but you believe that God has told you to stick it out, Surely you don't think that God is asking you to be there and be miserable from daylight till dark. He wants you to be able to be there with joy. And if he asks you to be there, he'll give you the grace to be there. If you feel like that you've been asked to do a job that's over your head, God will give you the grace to do it. If you've got to go through an illness, God will give you the grace to be there until your, his healing comes in your life. He's our healer and we don't ever want to give up on that. But sometimes we don't get it exactly when we'd like to have it or the way we'd like to get it. Grace is wonderful. I believe I would have went stark raving mad had I not learned about grace. Grace, grace, and more grace. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. To the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we happen to be in Thailand, and this little boy's name is Somded, and he's had some tragic things in his life, but thank God, through your help, he's now living in the children's home here, and his life is looking very bright. 
His parents both died when he was six in an auto accident. And when they found him to bring him here to the home, he had had severe ear infections, which had caused hearing loss and lots of other problems in his ears. So he's had about two years of medical treatment on his ears, and thank God he can hear fine now. And so thank you for helping us provide homes for some dead and for other little boys and girls like him all around the world. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meijer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard. Mis deze kans niet om Joyce Meijer live te zien. Well, I'm really excited about my first ever conference in the Netherlands. Uitdagende voordrachten. Inspirerende muziek van Hillsong London. Be part of this life-changing event. In Ahoy Rotterdam op zaterdag 9 mei 2015. Tickets zijn verkrijgbaar via onze website joyce-meijer.nl of bij Primera.